Let's listen to this brief clip of Jimmy Kimmel making his commentary on Donald Trump. It's only about 20 seconds long. So he says... Melania did make a rare appearance alongside her husband at a fundraiser on Saturday night. Trump claims he raked in $50 million Saturday night, which seems high, but he's not one to exaggerate at the <laughs> fundraiser. There's this little light that says laughter that comes on when you're supposed to laugh. He said he wants immigrants to come from nice countries like Denmark and Switzerland and nor nice whenever Trump says nice he means white whenever he says nice he means white to me that is a racist statement because what he is doing in essence my opinion you could disagree with me is Kimmel is suggesting that uh, white countries are nicer traditionally white countries they're not white as they used to be but traditionally white countries are nice but uh, or are reputed to be nice and so Trump picks up on that and uh, non-white countries then by default are not nice well let me ask you this where where would you prefer to live would you prefer to live in norway sweden switzerland or you would you prefer to live in iran or nigeria or south uh, south africa extremely violent or anywhere south of the border mexico central america extremely violent so what he's saying is, just my opinion, is he's kind of admitting uh, that he's sort of a white supremacist. Can we say that? Believes in white superiority. And another thing I've noticed is this. Um, three major networks have like late night rather talk shows. Who is uh, who? Who are the presenters? The British call them presenters. In America, we call them hosts. I like presenters better. Well, they're Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Fallon and Stephen Colbert. What do those three individuals have in common? They're all white and they're all males. I know Stephen Colbert is Jewish, but he looks white, so we throw him in. If they've got a problem with racism, I would think that they would quit their jobs in the name of equity and DEI, diversity, equity, and uh, what's the I stand for? Uh, I don't know, but in the name of DEI they would give up their jobs so that uh, somebody else who is not white and not male could have them. You know, someone like Oprah should do good with a late night show, don't you think? Another thing I notice about these people, making fun of uh, white majority nations being nice countries. Have you ever noticed where celebrities live? How many celebrities, white celebrities, white leftist celebrities live in black housing projects? I mean, they can live wherever they want. They got the money. And if they can't get a place in a black housing project, they could move in the neighborhood, right? But they don't. I mean, did, has, it noticed, uh, has anyone noticed that Malibu, California, one of the wealthiest uh, communities on the planet, uh, particularly in the country, it's basically all white. You know, Diana Ross lives there. She's not white. But uh, the rest of them are either white or, if you want to include Jews, is white or not, then we'll say white and Jewish. Why is that? Well, uh, I don't know. I guess they don't like black people. Maybe, you know. So there is this term called gaslighting. You're familiar with this, I'm sure. But gaslighting, the victims of gaslighting are deliberately and systematically fed false information about themselves that make them question what they know to be true, particularly something negative. So when someone talks about white privilege or they impose white guilt, which is normal in Hollywood, or which is effectively, in my opinion, what Jimmy Kimmel just did, that's gaslighting, my opinion. What they're doing is they're making us deliberately and systematically, they're making us white people question what we know to be true. What we know to be true is we are not racist but you know the marxist paradigm they've got to divide us between the um proletariat and the bourgeois class and so uh, in uh, in china during the cultural revolution it was the intellectual class that was designated as the uh, oppressive bourgeois but in western countries it is uh, white people who are the oppressive bourgeois class. Everyone else is oppressed. Speaking of which, um, 
I don't know if you saw this or not, but uh, the Key Bridge. Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore. They want it renamed after a black person. Because um, I think uh, I think Key was a slaveholder and he wrote the National Anthem. And there is something in the National Anthem that they claim is racist. All right, so what do we take away from this? What we take away from it is they started by banning the Confederate flag and Confederate uh, symbols, Confederate imagery, because they're racist. That set the precedent. That cracked open the door. Now they're going after anything and everything that represents Western culture. Why do they hate Western culture? Well, Western people tend to be innovative. You know, we invented just about everything. And that doesn't sit well with Marxists because in the Marxist mindset, we're all basically the same. And if there is any uh, difference in economic status, it's got to be due to social oppression. So uh, they have to erase anything that is natural and pretend it's sociological. So it says here, the caucus of African-American leaders, I didn't know there was such a thing, has unanimously voted to ask that, the, that when the Francis Scott Key Bridge is rebuilt, it no longer bear the name of the National Anthem's author. I mean, this guy is so evil, you would uh, claim, uh, you would think that he's, a uh, basketball star, you know, a white woman basketball star, college basketball star. The 47-year-old bridge was toppled by a massive cargo ship, you knew that, and the caucus is calling on the governor and the Maryland General Assembly to rename the bridge after United States Senator Representative Perrin J. Mitchell. Now, what I notice about this is there are... A significant number of black people throughout American history who contributed much to this country, business people, but we don't even know who they are because the Oak Club won't talk about them. When they want to rename something, you know, a street or a lamppost, or in this case a bridge, they always want to name it after a social justice activist. In this case, it's a uh, person who also happens to be a U.S. representative. What are they doing? Well, in my opinion, they are destroying our culture. And then there's this. Did you know the four-day work week could be racist? I like the way they say could be. And that is according to a report, and they use the word suggest. This is from telegraph.co.uk. And if we scroll down here, we, you know, I read through this whole thing, and I was wondering how could a four-day work week possibly be racist? Well, apparently, the way they reason this is upper management tends to be white and lower management in public sector, and the public sector tends to be non-white. This is in Great Britain. This is in Wales, you know, a country in Great Britain. One unnamed member uh, that's a shock of a group reportedly said that allowing workers to have an extra day off would require them to hire an additional 179 staff on full-time equivalent contracts. So I guess he's saying contracts, does that mean hiring them or farming out? I don't know, but here is the reason. Costs faced by workers having to partake, uh, partake rather in more leisure activities on their additional day off, as well as on the impact of energy bills of having to heat homes during the normally spent uh, time normally spent at work. So how is this racist? Well, it's taking this class of people, working class of people who are disproportionately represented by non-whites, I guess, and it's forcing them to have more leisure activities. Seems to me that would be a good thing. Apparently, they think it's not. What's more, they're going to have to heat their homes because they're home. So it's going to run up their electric bill. So here's what I think the angle is. Don't know, they didn't say it, but my guess is what they're going to do is they're going to say, you know, yeah, let's have a four-day work week, but 
let's increase their pay so that, uh, you know, because they're having to take leisure time. Most people want leisure time. I don't get that one. And uh, they're going to have to pay more for energy bills because none of these people leave their heat on, I guess, when they go to work. How do they know that? Well, you know, this is grasping at straws. You know, they're really, really out of, uh, out of line here. And then there's this one, Donald Trump. Last year, a survey of more than 1,500 people who voted for him in the uh, 2020 election found a significant majority of the former president's supporters believe that racism against white Americans has become a bigger problem than racism against black Americans. I disagree with that. I don't think it has become. I think it always has been. Now, with a very real prospect of a second term in the office on the horizon, it says, Trump and his team of advisors have begun working on plans to federalize one vector of that inverted interpretation of discrimination. Why is it inverted? I mean, if you discriminate against a class of people, it's discrimination. It doesn't matter. Should voters return Trump to the White House, next Justice Department will likely dramatically change the government's interpretation of civil rights laws to focus on anti-white racism rather than discrimination against people of color. I doubt it, but that's what they say. Uh, how do they know that? Eh, they're just, you know, again, they're just um, making stuff up. The point of the matter is uh, everybody knows that uh, diversity is our strength. So why does this even matter? I mean, if diversity is our strength, and we all know that it is, this should not be an, an issue. Now, down here it talks about uh, extremist groups are making plans. Reading the article, I got to wonder, when they, when they say extremist groups, are they talking extremist Islamist groups? Are they talking extreme left-wing groups? I don't think they acknowledge extremist left-wing groups, even... Um, Antifa, or Antifa, if you want to call it that, is not considered an extremist group, according to these people, because they are extremists, but they think they're normal, my opinion. At the forefront of Trump's circles, um, of the Trump circles plan to upend civil rights legislation, now they're saying it as if it's fact. Remember in the headline, it was, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a plan, it's kind of a suggestion. But now they're saying it's a fact. At the forefront of uh, the plan to upend civil rights legislation in favor of white people is Stephen Miller, the former White House advisor, largely responsible for some of the administration's most draconian anti-immigration policies. You know, things like uh, building a wall and making people come in the country legally. Following this time, the Trump administration and the Trump administration, Miller, here's the explanation here, with his long and well-documented history of white national leanings. Where is it? Okay, they've got links here. Found America First Legal, a conservative nonprofit he describes as the right wing's long-awaited answer to the ACLU. The group is primarily notable as a policy harbinger or harbinger, if you prefer, for a second term. The New York Times. What is that Jimmy Kimmel said sarcastically? You know, they're, they're not biased, are they? Last month added that AFL has already alleged that woke corporations like Disney, Nike, Mattel, Hershey, United Airlines, and the National Football League, they left out Kroger's whatever, uh, discriminate against white males. Okay, well, if they do, then they need to be called out on it. You know, I fail to see a problem. What you see is a red dot. Lower right-hand corner, if you click on that dot, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, be part of our family. Lower right-hand corner, there is a rectangle. Click on that, and you can watch some of our past videos and our commentary. And we'll see you all next time.